It's here at the Avid Brothers Lab at Borders. Yes, yes. Sold out show tonight at the Michigan Theater. We're at absolute packed capacity here at Borders, and it's uh, easy to understand why. We're getting a lot of cool questions here through Facebook. Um, how about this one? Speaking of collaborations, a guy named Josh Combs is asking this. Uh, Seth, are you guys looking forward to playing with Government Mule, and how about any future possible collaborations in the works? We are looking forward to it. Um, as far as collaborative work, we just we let it happen as natural as possible. We, we generally don't... Um, uh, try to introduce like ourselves to someone for the purpose of collaborative work. Kind of feel like the art might suffer for that reason. So, uh, you know, we work with our friends, we make friends with new people, and then if it makes sense, we, we can make music with them, but it's not something that we, feels kind of opportunist to kind of go, to go for that, you know? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah we're definitely looking forward to the show for sure. And Scott, let me you ask you this. There, there are so many influences and so many sounds that, that we hear in your music. What's in your record collection? When, what, what originally got you motivated to, to become a musician? What artists? Well, uh, in those most influential years, uh, the teenage years, I think, when it's really just sinking in and you're actually practicing what you're watching, uh, Mike Patton was somebody that I tried to, I just imitated him basically on stage in rock bands. I, uh, and the reason I did that was because he was the only example that I had, uh, <clears throat> and it seemed firsthand, take a show to here and then take it back down to here at any given moment. And um, the dynamic of that meant, meant the world to me. Um, he doesn't translate as well to the mainstream all the time, but um, there were mainstream artists as well, like uh, as we were, we were toying with in, uh, acoustic instruments, the obvious ones like Bob Dylan and, and Neil Young. And, uh, then going back to when we were younger, thinking of the Tom T. Hall, and uh, it's funny, John Denver was an eight-track tape that I had that I used to listen to, and uh, uh, this, yeah, like Grandma's Feather Bed and stuff. As a child, that stuff was uh, was huge, and now going back, you realize how great it really was. And once you break through those barriers, um, that 27-year-old thing, once you get past the hip thing, right. and you realize how right. great all that stuff was through and through, timeless, then you realize, okay, we're nestled in, and everything we've ever listened to, uh, you know, watching Yo Gabba Gabba and you're realizing this is sick, this is amazing <laughs> yeah, and there, yeah. even though Yo Gabba Gabba is pretty hip you break through that and you realize uh, <laughs> if the musicians that we liked were the ones that went out and just ripped it and did their best and you start noticing that if they make mistakes or if they, they do something that's embarrassing and they keep pushing <laughs> it doesn't affect them and you follow that, you watch that and go that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to be. So you start seeing yourself. I, I know I'm, I'm kind of switching this question around no, on right. this person. <laughs> but uh, it, you become embarrassed proof because you, uh, you know you're there to do a job and you start pushing through. And all these artists, these old country guys, Tom Waits, he was a guy like that. Uh, you know, watching yeah. that stuff, you just, you just want to be like that and you look up to it. Uh, yeah, but absolutely. before, uh, one of the bigger things that influenced me for, uh, as a musician was just a blue-collar uh, childhood was working outside and my dad sending me out at 15 years old on a bridge to work with his welding crew um, till I was 22. Those things, when we went into this and got serious and, and needed to know what real work was, it made this doable. It made getting up at 5 a.m. to make a radio show after you'd gone to bed at 2 doable because you started realizing, you know, I've been through some hard work and now I know what it is and we'll do this. And for us, that carries us a, a long way. And it, it, it also made us fairly uh, hard on each other. The blue collar background, we were pretty hard on each other. Very hard because about being on time. Somebody show up 10 minutes late, you're like, I don't know if you really have a, yeah. a place yeah. in this band anymore. <laughs> Good for so you. So we had to break away from that because most clubs, you know, you'd get there and they were usually two hours late. Yeah, exactly. And you were going to play there. You weren't going to fire them. You yeah. wanted to play. So. Yeah, exactly. But that's Try as subject. you may. No, that's fire them. <laughs> Our guest today, Borders 01, the Avid Brothers, performing a sold-out show tonight at the Michigan Theater, I and Love and You. Of course, their brand-new album, signing copies after the performance. I'm Martin Bandai from Ann Arbor's 1071. we got to close out our radio broadcast, but want to continue on here at Borders? Would you like some more music from the Avid Brothers? All right? All right. friend of ours, Mr. Jacob Edwards, on the drum kit back here, y'all. All 
All right, this is a talk on indolence.